So you use a proof by induction to show that something is going to be true for every natural number. So that's generally a pretty difficult thing to do because there's an infinite number of natural numbers. So you need to show something is going to hold for an infinite number of cases. Now proof by induction works a lot like a line of dominoes. So with this line of dominoes, we see that each domino is given a number. In this case, we have 0 through 15. And we want to know, are all of the dominoes in this line going to fall over? So for each numbered domino, is the domino with that number going to, going to fall? So essentially what we're trying to prove here is, is the statement domino n is going to fall true for every choice of n? So the way that dominoes fall is that you knock over the first domino in the line, and then the first domino knocks over the second, and the second knocks over the third, and so forth, until eventually all your dominoes have fallen. And that's exactly how a proof by induction works. If I want to know how, do, how can I tell that domino n is going to fall, all I have to do is figure out that uh, whether or not domino n minus 1 is going to knock it over. So then, as long as I knew that domino n minus 1 was going to knock that domino over, then I knew that domino n was going to fall. So the way that a proof by induction works is that you have to start with some base case. Since every domino needs to be knocked over by the domino before it, we need to know that the first domino with no domino before it is definitely going to fall over. Once we have established that that first domino is going to fall over, all we have to do is show that whenever one arbitrary domino in the middle of the line falls, it's going to knock over the next one in the line. So the way this proof works is we can say that how do I know that the first domino is going to, is going to fall over? So we have to first establish how we know the first domino is going to fall over. Well, that one's obvious. I'm going to push it. As for all the other dominoes in the line, all I need to do is make sure that domino is going to get knocked over by the previous one, so that now I can finally conclude all the dominoes fall. The idea of a proof by induction is that the way that we show something is true for every natural number is by first observing that with the exception of zero, every natural number is one more than some other natural number. So the way that we're going to show that something is true for all natural numbers is we first show that it's true for zero. And then we show that when that thing is true for some natural number, it's always going to be true for the next one as well. So since it's true for zero, the only natural number without something before it, and whenever it's true for one thing, it's true for the next thing, then we must be able to conclude that that's going to be true for every natural number. Because it's true for zero, which makes it true for one, which makes it true for two, etc. So let's do an example of a proof by induction. So what we're going to show is that the number of binary strings of length n is going to equal to 2 to the n. So more precisely, what we're trying to show is that for every choice of a natural number n, so for every n that belongs to the set of natural numbers, we're trying to show that the size of the set 0, 1 to the power n, so this is the set of all binary strings of length n, is going to be equal to 2 to the n. So this is our goal to show that for all natural numbers n, the size of the set 0, 1 raised to the power n, so binary strings of length n, is equal to 2 to the n. So the first thing that we need to do when we're looking at a proof by induction is we need to establish our base case. We need to prove our base case. So in this case, our base case, we need to, true we need to show that this statement is true for n equals 0. So we need to show that the size of the set 0, 1, raised to the 0 power is going to be equal to 2 to the power 0. So when we raise 0, 1 to the 0 power, so the number of binary strings that are going to be of length 0, well, there's only one of those. So 0, 1 to the 0 power is just the set containing the empty string. And the size of that set is going to be equal to 1. And 2 to the 0 is equal to 1. So our base case is done. The next thing we need to show is what we call the inductive step. So the inductive step is where we say, assume that something is going to be true of some value. So we're going to assume that the size of 0, 1 to the n 
is equal to 2 to the n. So under the assumption that 0, 1 to the n is the size of 0, 1 to the n is equal to 2 to the n, we want to show that that's going to cause that statement to be true for n plus 1 as well. So we need to show that uh, the number of binary strings of length n plus 1 is also equal to 2 to the n plus 1. So assume that it's true for some arbitrary natural number n, and try to conclude that it's going to be true for the natural number n plus 1 as well. So here's how we're going to show our inductive step. So let's consider some binary string, let's call it s, that comes from the set 0, 1 to the n. So that's a binary string of length n. We can turn s into a binary string of length n plus 1 in two different ways. So we can turn s into a binary string of length n plus 1 by either 1 doing s concatenated with 0. So put a 0 at the end of s. Or the other way is to do s concatenated with 1. So put 1 at the end of s. And these two, those produce unique strings. So this means that for every string of length n, there are going to be two of length n plus 1. So this concludes that this allows us to conclude that the size of the set 0, 1 raised to the n plus 1 power must be equal to twice whatever the size was of the set of strings of length n. So the size of the set 0, 1 to the n plus 1 power must equal 2 times the size of uh, 0, 1 to the n power. And we assumed in our inductive step, so if it was true that the size of 0, 1 to the n equals 2 to the n, then it must have been true that the size of 0, 1 to the n plus 1 equals 2 times 2 to the n, which is equal to 2 to the n plus 1. So now our inductive step is proven, and we've shown our claim holds for all natural numbers in. So for our next example of a proof by induction, we're going to go back to that pancake problem. So if you recall, the pancake problem stated that we needed to take some stack of pancakes and get it sorted so that the largest pancake was on the bottom and the smallest pancake was on the top. So perhaps you noticed while you were working through your examples of that pancake problem that there was sort of one procedure that we could use in order to sort any stack of pancakes. So maybe what you saw was something like, to sort some stack of pancakes, what you could do is you could first uh, flip the largest pancake to the top, and then after the largest was on the top, you could flip the whole stack over so that now the largest was on the bottom, and then finally you could repeat on a stack of size n minus 1. So on all of the pancakes that were above the largest pancake, you just repeat that same procedure. Now, this definition is missing something. We sort of need a step zero here that says if the stack is sorted, then you're done. You don't need to do anything else. And now we have a complete procedure for how to sort a stack of n pancakes. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the idea of this procedure to demonstrate that every stack of pancakes can be sorted in no more than two n flips. So we're trying to show that every stack of n pancakes can be sorted in two n flips or fewer. That is, that we're trying to show for every natural number n, if I have a stack of pancakes of length n, or of size n, that I'm trying to sort, the number of flips that's going to require is going to be less than, two to, less than or equal to 2 to the n. So, in order to show our proof by induction, we need to first demonstrate a base case where we need to show that the number of flips for zero pancakes is less than or equal to two times zero. So if we have zero pancakes in our stack, then our stack is going, we're just going to go ahead and say that our stack is already sorted, no flips required, and so we need zero flips for a stack of zero pancakes, which satisfies our base case. So next we need to show our inductive step. So our inductive step, the way that that's going to work is we're going to show that if the number of flips for a stack of size n is less than or equal to 2 times n, then that's going to imply that the number of flips for n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 times n plus 1. 
So let's see how this is going to work. If we have our stack of size n plus 1, so to sort our stack of size n plus 1, what we're going to do is we're going to say, first of all, if that largest pancake wasn't on top, we're going to flip the largest to the top, and then two, flip the whole stack, so that now the largest is on the bottom, and our step three in our procedure was to repeat on the top n pancakes. So th these first two, these required two flips. And then this last one, the number of flips that that required was however many flips were required for a stack of size n. So that means in general that the number of flips for a stack of size n plus 1 is going to be equal to two flips from putting the largest on top and then flipping the stack, plus the number of flips for a stack of size n, which our inductive step said that we were going to assume that the number of flips for a stack of size n was less than or equal to 2 to the n. So that means that the number of flips for n plus 1 is going to be equal to 2 plus the number of flips for n, which is less than or equal to 2 plus 2n, which is equal to 2 times n plus 1. So in general, that means that the number of flips required to sort a stack of n plus 1 is less than or equal to 2 times n plus 1. So we have shown our inductive step. So this holds for every stack of pancakes.